All right, time for another battery talk. This time, uh, following the thread from yesterday. In the questions we've seen today, and for many, many times before too, we've seen the questions: How do you add a just a plug and play uh, 44, 48 volt battery to your EcoFlow, or to yeah, to EcoFlow or Blue Eddy or whatever? All these other ones. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. That's even simpler than doing the DI1 one yesterday, right? So let me show you. You're going to need, you're going to need your EcoFlow Delta Pro. At least one of these 48 volts, you know, they're usually 100 amp hours. They're 52 volts, uh, five kilowatt hours, right? At least one, but you can always just have a whole stack like this. This is 20 kilowatt hours battery. Then you'll need your solar cable that comes with your EcoFlow. And then you're gonna need these uh, MC4 connectors to ring terminals. These, I made these ones here, but you can find these on Amazon. I'm gonna link it on the bottom of this video in the description so you can just buy them, right? So then you're gonna plug one over here in the positive, one in the negative. Let's do that now. All right, there we go. Now you have the con the cables in here. Gotta make sure the polarities are correct, so. All right, and here we go. Here's the red on the positive and the negative on the black one there. Okay, so now we just have to plug in your EcoFlow into the back with the cable that you got from EcoFlow. So here we go, plug it in here. There we go, plugged in. So then we turn on this battery, it's on, there we go. So that's about 48 volts that is gonna start going into the EcoFlow. There we go, the EcoFlow now. Ooh, look at that. 400, 500, 700, 800. So there we go. You can get 800 watts off of that setup right there. And you could go, you know, well, you can go forever because that's 20 kilowatt hours right there. <laughs> this is three and a half kilowatt hours, right? So you're adding five, six times more battery capacity to your EcoFlow. So that's how you would do it. Now you can use uh, stuff from here, from the DC on the AC side, I think I mean, and as long as you don't exceed 800 watts, um, well, you just can keep going kind of on forever until you run out of uh, battery over there, right? Which is a long time. You can run this for a week, two weeks or whatever depending on your load. But I know what you're saying. What if we were to add those in series? Can we get max off uh, solar charged in there? Well, let's try it out. Of course, we're gonna risk ruin those because I don't know if the BMS is on these will handle 100 amp, 100 volts going through there, right? But, well, that's why I'm here. I will risk. <laughs> ruining two of these so that you don't have to. Let's rewire this. <clears throat> All right, there we go. So look, the negative is going to the bottom one and then the positive of that one is going to the negative of this one. And then, right, and then the positive that comes out of the top, now that's going to the solar. So they're just in series. If you put them side to side, you just connect this to the other one, and then the two edge posts would be your your uh, exit points, right? So these have a bunch of safety features. This might not even work. They might detect higher voltage going to them, and if that's the case, then uh, it might not even work. So let's turn the first one on. Let me see what the BMS says. 52 volts, so it just be over 100 volts. So I just turned one on, so that current is going right through the top one. Yeah. 
So what happens? Can we turn both of them on at the same time? Yeah, I want to turn them on at the same time. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to stand back. <laughs> yeah, it should be no big deal. Ooh, 1600 watts of power going to the Delta. We're charging fast here. Let me get my... I'm going to go get my, my plant meter so I can see how much... Uh, well, actually, this thing could tell me. Uh, oh, yeah, 15 amps. Look at that. Each, each pack is seeing 15 amps. So we're getting full. We're getting full power off of these. And it turns out we could have done that yesterday with the EB Force 2, but we were just using a generic XT60 connector. And that has a, uh, a special, another type of connector that has an extra pin in here. So now that we know that, you can get full power off of these batteries right there, connected in series. So you can connect those in series. And they don't immediately blow up. I don't know if they will blow up with time or not. <laughs> but I've been using BMSs in series for a long time and everyone says the same thing. They're not designed for that. That's true, they're not designed for that. But also these batteries are not designed for you know anything other than scooters and yet we've been using them forever, right? So yeah, just cause something wasn't designed for something doesn't mean it's not gonna work. That's how the bottom line it works. Many times it does work, right? But I have made a whole career <laughs> of trying to use things not the way they were designed, but in, you know, uh, different ways, right? And uh, very often they do. You just have to be a little bit smart. You just have to be a little creative and uh, then it works. Now, so obviously this will work this way, right? But then how do you charge those batteries? Uh, can you charge those with just like a, a 100 amp, 100 volt charger in series like that? I think you can. Pretty sure you probably can. Now, I will have to get a 100 uh, volt. Do I have one right now? I don't. I would have to order a 100 volt power supply that's variable. I think the one that I have goes to all the way to 80. So I'll order one and then I'll try to charge them and then see what happens. These have their own BMSs. So as they see energy going into them they should balance the cells in between them there's all this stuff there should be no reason why these couldn't work in series like this right because what they are seeing in and out of their own it's only 48 volts or whatever the range is you know anywhere between like 42 volts or 36 volts all the way to like 58 or something like that which is the top charge uh volts voltage on that right so yeah you just have to charge those off a of solar or you'd have to charge those with a charger plug it into the wall or plug it into this thing and then plug uh, your solar panels in here this is to extend the battery of this guy someone was saying like why would anybody want to do that that's because like for some reason you can't have solar in this building i can't have solar but i can have batteries i can have you know 100 kilowatt hour 200 you know megawatt hours of batteries in here and I can slowly charge them uh, or fast charge them using, uh, you know, the, the wall, you know, using the grid. But then when the day comes that, you know, the grid goes down, for example, and it's going to be extended long a period of time, you know, if it's only for a few hours, maybe the battery that's inside this thing will be enough. But if you require more battery than that, you know, you can just plug in batteries in here. Now you could use this as the inverter also, right? not so much for the battery that's inside this is a very good powerful inverter 3.6 kilowatt inverter uh and so it has very nice features you can track it you can do this thing you can set it up as a ups you can so that you can use this high quality inverter with the battery inside but if you need more than that you can add more of course the easiest way is just to buy the ecoflow external battery but if you want to do it in a cheaper way or or you want to do more than the two that you can 
uh, in connect to this unit, then this is one way to do it. You just put a rack and you put a huge battery in there. And then now you can run this in an extended period of time without needing to put solar, either because you can or you want or you want to. So there you go. This is a small video just to show you that this is how you can charge your EcoFlow. Hey, look at that. It's going down to 12. And I think the reason why it's doing that is because I think maybe what's happening is that the the uh, solar charge controller in this thing is getting hot probably. Let's see. Is it the battery's voltage going down? No, this, this voltage stays pretty well. Yeah, what's going down is the amps. So yeah, this thing runs 1600 watts for a few minutes. Then after that, it gets hot. And then after that, you know, it starts slowing down just to protect itself so it doesn't burn it up. 1600 watts is quite a bit of power, right? Uh, for a small inverter that's in there, a small solar charge controller, basically. So but these things are pretty awesome. This combination here is a killer, definitely. All right, I hope this uh, helps anybody out there that has all these questions. Uh, and if you have, I think I have several of these units, a bunch of different models. I have some even over there that like I never even uh, uh, reviewed and stuff. Uh, if you want to see that, just post it in the comments here. And then that's easy for me to just to make a cable and plug it in and make a little video. And there you go. And then you can we can discuss this stuff, right? Thank you. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.